The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, the host of the show, and also the author of the opening call daily newsletter. Wow. This is a most fascinating market. Let me explain to you what I'm looking at here. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for that fourth highest peak, a peak D, where other things can happen. We saw that back on uh, the 12th of July at 27,306, where we had the opportunity to go short about seven points from the all-time, from the all, no, from that particular high. No, it was the all-time high at 27,398 on the 16th of July, peak D. We, we missed this one. We got a little later on, just about 100 points off the top, um, and that was the one from the 12th of, of September, peak D, doji candle, peak D. Now what I'm looking at is, within the Chapman Wave methodology, so far, if you're looking at the technicals, you'll see that the MACD is still acting very nicely. Uh, the stochastic's at 88%. Nothing wrong with that scene at all. But if you look at the price, this, the quickness with which we've gone to peak A, then peak B, and then peak C, and now potentially going to try for a leg C or peak C1, C2, underneath the previous high of 27,036 makes me just a little cautious for two reasons. One is whenever there's a failure to make a new, a decent recovery high from the previous high, it might be an all-time high, but the one on the left, in this case, 27,306, and you make that D underneath it, it says, you know, this one didn't have nearly as much strength. It's going to probably take quite a bit of juice, a kind of a buildup of momentum to be able to build the kind of power that takes it right through, not just the 27,306 level, but the 27,400 area, which would be all-time highs. I, you know, let me just explain why I'm looking at it this way. I'm looking at it and I'm saying my Dow Quartet index, of course, it cannot be an index with just uh, four stocks, but the Dow Quartet, which has served me very well for decades as an indicator of what to look at in the in the Dow, um, this is really, this is a caterpillar made a peak C minus failure back on the 13th of September, 133.99. Drops down to the 118, was that 118, 80, 117.25 here on the third. Has a nice rally, but so far it's really struggling. It's doing very nicely, but when you look at how the effort that it's taking in the technicals and the, the, and the price movement is nothing like the rally that you saw back in September. And it had an all-time high of 173 back in January of 2018. Plummets down to 111. Uh, just uh, fairly recently, and that was on the 28th of August. So this is in a, it's not even a recovery phase right now. It has to break the monthly uh, resistance and get to 140. But the weekly chart is saying, yeah, there's a nice cup formation for me. And the daily says, pretty good rebound. But if you look at the monthly chart, this is an H pattern that's trying to succeed in becoming a successful break to the upside. If you look at IBM, IBM is the, is the stock that's really dragging the Dow down. It's down six today at 133.19. It just never fails at earnings to, to come up with something. They've been doing cloud. I think they're having a problem with the cloud because maybe they're, 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 um, they're just not able to identify what a cloud is because that's the way it looks here. It just is not good action at all for IBM. And they've been trying to do this for years. I remember going to a wedding back in the where, – where is um, – uh, out there in near the Catskills and down the Hudson River, where, what, what academy is there? Anyway, I went to a wedding there, and I remember meeting somebody who had worked for IBM. Remember, IBM has its headquarters out there. Um, he had been working for for 30 or 40 years, and he said, yeah, we've been trying to get this. Now we've moved to the cloud, but it's taking a long time. I, I don't know what they're doing wrong. I mean, West Point, thank you very much, Peter. I knew it was West Point. I just forgot it right there. Thank you, everybody there, West Point, yes. And uh, that was just, uh, that was the location, the area that I was at. 
um, at a venue there. So I remember it very well. And I remember coming back and saying, what's with IBM? It just cannot get its act together. Still can't get its act together. And then you look at Triple M. Triple M coming off a bottom. I mean, 259 was a January 2018 high. And just the other day, it hits 150, 100 points down. I mean, what are we looking at here? Is this, something's wrong with this picture? But maybe these are beginning to base. And look at UTX, much, much better. But still, going to a leg D today, that's where we were missing. So now it's in leg D. We were along this once upon a time, not long now. But look, look at the way it's, um, it's kind of leading that Dow Quartet that I was talking about. But... It needs to do a lot more. Right now, I like it very much. I think it's acting well. It's bumping into this downtrend line in the weekly chart. Um, it's gone above it, but it hasn't closed above. We've got another day to go for the week to see if it's able to get to the 140, 139-ish area. Today's high is 138.74. Maybe close near 139.50 in options expiration. Try to get to that magic 140 options uh, uh, round number close. We'll see. But anyway, I'm saying that I'm a little cautious about these things. And the FANG stocks are not doing all that great. So it says to me, having some cash... It's not a bad idea. Being in the market is not a bad idea. Be selective. If it's working, You want to, that's what you want to be holding, as long as it's selective. But if, if, if you're in a losing position and it just hasn't succeeded in rallying in all these big rallies in the market, coming off lows 400, 500, 600, 1,000 points up and then giving back some, if it hasn't participated, it's probably not in the right area. So just be careful. Look at the S&P. So we're talking about in the Chapman Way, we're always looking for at least a D. There's that D in the S&P. The MACD is good, not anywhere close to how good it was back when it hit 3,021, all-time high back on the 19th of September. But it is good, and the weekly chart is improving. Uh, if you look at the QQQ, it's kind of leading the pack in a way it was. Today it's down some. It's down 4 cents at 193, 194. 555 was the all-time high. I'm still calling this a leg B. I still think we go to a C and a D this year. Uh, yeah, we haven't got how many months have we got? This is October, November. We've got two and a half months. I think by then we should make a leg C above 195.55. So now let me go to some other areas. So um, gold. Gold is up very nicely, up 5.6 right now at 14.99. Trying to get back into the rectangle formation. It's just, I think it's taking a well-earned digestive phase. That's all I'm talking about in terms of what we're looking at. Silver's the same thing. I wanted to show you silver's actually a little bit better. Oh, up 1.11%, up 19 cents at 17.62. Is It's gone above the base that it uses as, as a support level. If it can get to, if silver can get to $18.37 in the next week and a half, as October closes, I would say that's very good action to say that silver is in play, as gold is in play, but silver has been the laggard, and I want to see it start to ameliorate some of that weakness by, by moving closer to the 19.75 most recent high of the 4th of September. And right now it's way down to 17.625. So it's got a lot of work to be done. If you look at the dollar, and I, I said to subscribe, we've been along the dollar since April of 2018. We've taken just a little bit off. We hit 99.46. 90.07 was, was, was our entry point. So uh, at this point, this stage I'm looking at and I'm saying this weekly chart says sell mode in the dollar and that takes me to all those to the currencies and it takes me to the commodities. I'll be back because I want to talk about that straight off the return. Basil Chapman Dow's down 16, SP is up five. Is this dichotomy because of IBM? We'll talk about that as well. And we'll look at gold and royal. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, we're back. So what I want you to say is that we've got a crossover, negative crossover with a day to go, day and a half to go in the weekly chart of um, the dollar. And I'm pretty sure that I'll have no choice but to put it down arrow and say the down mode in the uh, daily has been upgraded to a down uh, to a down signal, a sell signal, which by Friday's close could immediately go from a sell signal to an immediate upgrade of a sell mode. That means that that leg D in the monthly chart says D is where you've got to be careful. D in the daily, D in the weekly, D for D for dailies, um, or daily for Ds. And now we've got a potential November peak D coming up. MACD is good. Stochastic's holding nicely at 89%. I'm just watching this closely because I think that looking out, I still believe the dollar is going to be the place to be. But this is a well-known digestive phase. We've had it before. Uh, 97.12 on a closing basis will be the 14-period black uh, moving average right there, support that needs to hold, plus this uptrend line intramonth at 96.76, continues the dollar index. So that means the EUR, USD, is um, moving very strong. This is the first time that we've actually been able to say you've got the technicals and you've got the dollar down. Your technicals helping the euro, euro-dollar currency pair, trading at 1.112, up 0 0.005. Leg A in the in leg C in the daily, leg A in the weekly. Ah, I can't even call it a leg A yet in the monthly because it made a lower low in uh, October. In October, so let's see what happens. Let me just double check. Oh eight eight four nine oh eight, oh. Oh, yep, it made a lower low. So that's not even a leg eight. I have to wait in November to see if it's a leg eight. It's a start. And if you look at the USD JPY, you've got yourself um, something very interesting. It's the 200 period moving average, the orange line at 108.76 is holding it. It's at 108.54 today, having hit 108.96. And that was a, oh, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't do that. This should have been, this is, uh, let me just do this again. This is, I think, is that 464? Uh, okay, okay, it is. So this is EA. Yeah, so this is um, FB. I'm calling it an F for now and a G slash C in the daily. 
and the wiki has gone to a leg B. So the uh, other currencies are doing well. What happened to the British pound, British pound right now? Where did I type that wrong place? Type it over here. I typed it right on the chart. BP, British pound, holding very nicely. I put a little bit of fib in here. Um, it's holding the fib. It went almost to the 138. It's in leg B. I'm calling this a brand new B. It could be a G, but I really want to call it a B. I think the pound made a low of substance, and we're going to see what happens with the, with the whole Brexit thing. Of course, there's still 1.2008 back in the week of the August the 6th. I think that's a significant low, and we might go a little bit lower than that. I would not be surprised if that's where it starts to bounce. Now, I had a question about uh, royal gold. I like to look at royal gold because it's not only um, – uh, part of the gold, a very important part of the gold uh, smorgasbord of stocks. Um, it is also, let's see, there we are. They also get uh, a premium. They get, um, there we go. Okay. They also get uh, some kind of a royalty, I guess. Um, and at this particular point, at 121.47, it's three, uh, up 332. I'm calling this a leg for now E slash B. I don't have to make a decision yet because the MACD is very strong. Stochastic's holding 87. I'm suspecting that there's a chance that this will become a B as long as it doesn't break under 109, 109 uh, in the next month. And the low, most recent low was 114.50. Nice move up seven points in just two days. Now, the question is this. Let me just show you a couple of techniques that I use. You see the Chapman Wave dreaded H. Remember, I was talking to you about where did it go? Right here. So in the Chapman Wave methodology, what we're always looking for is right there. These cups and arches, but within the arch formation, there's a pattern I call the dreaded H. Lowercase H, it has a sharp move down. There's that sharp move down. Let me move this to the right here, and I can point. And then it goes in an arch formation, and then it takes its red because it, if it takes out that left side low, that's that's negative. So yes, it not only took and closed decisively below that, um, now it's a little bit above the low of 120, 120.70. So intraday today we've gone above it. I usually say maximum within three bars you get to get you got to get back above that left side low. Well, it's done that uh, today. We haven't closed yet, but so far it's so good. Now what I am looking at is within this context, the daily is still in a sell mode. There is a nice little turn at 20% in the stochastic. This is where things can happen. I, if it starts to go under that into the 19 and 18 percent area, it says, oops, it's going even lower. But at this particular point, the MACD is negative, trying to turn around. Let's leave the daily for a minute because that to me is it needs to close above 124.70 by next week, by Wednesday of next week, without breaking under 117. Okay, now we look at the weekly chart, and that weekly chart says, hey, wait a minute, the MACD closed negative for two weeks. This is the second week, this is the third, actually, the third week of turn down. The stochastics is 65%. And look, the nine period, green nine period moving average is hasn't even started its move towards the 14 period moving average. It's just barely started it today. It's a weekly chart. So that says that Technically, we've got a lowercase h pattern. We've gone under it. So you've got to be careful. But at this particular point, if you had to ask me right now, is Royal Gold, RGLD, trading 121.56, up 3.41, is this negative or positive? I have to say to you, as long as the nine period moving average is positive like this, I have to think that it hasn't started its move, big move to the downside. So, so far, the daily is the lead index, and it saved the day by having a really good bounce over two days, but it's just back in the trading band. The, the weekly chart says, if you're long, if it starts to close under 119 one more time, take a little bit off. You can always put it back. But bigger, long, longer-term positions, nothing to see here. That longer-term position so far is sacrosanct because it's had such a beautiful move to the upside. Where does it start to become very negative? 
at 109. But if you want to wait uh, 12 points, 10%, to find that out, it's better just to have a little bit of, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a little nervous about it right now, then you can take a little bit of, if you're saying, wait a minute, and the question was, has this made a bottom? And I'm going to say it's made a bottom. I don't think it's the bottom. And the reason I say that is because the Stochastic and MACD have still got a lot of work to do. And unless the price really improves to the point where it starts to trade in the high 124s, low 125s, then I can say, hey, now there's a chance that the MACD in the weekly chart goes flat. Yes, it's negative, but as long as the distance between the diff nine period differential, the green line, faster moving average, and the 26 period exponential moving average, the red line, remains narrow. At this point, it's still a bit wide, but if it gets narrow, it can flatten out and you can start to see a bounce. And what it says, no, not necessarily a buy signal in the in the weekly chart, but a stabilization because it's had a lot of technical damage. It's just it's trying to recoup from that, and that's what this bounce is about. So I don't think this is the low. It might be a low. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let's just go back to Royal Gold. Got some other questions there. So just for Royal Gold, I want you to say that within the context of gold digesting its gains, as we've been talking about, silver digesting its gains, or oh, this is Royal Gold, um, the fact that it gets royalties and the gold stocks had done really well, but a lot of them have given back quite a chunk of the gains. I'm just thinking that there's a good chance that it moves sideways. And then there's one one more dip to the downside. And that dip to the downside says, 
it must hold 114. If it breaks it, maybe 112, maybe maybe somewhere around 112. That's where I want to really look at it again because I think it'll have used up the time that I'm looking at as a digestive phase. Um, that's my, that might be where I get another signal in the dollar. Is it now going to go to another down phase, or is that where it usually turns around and comes back up? Will that impact gold? Gold and dollar actually have been moving in the same direction a little bit lately. That's unusual. So that's all I'm saying. So is it is it, is it a low? I think it's a low. I don't think it's the low, but I think it's tradable right now because of the dollar weakness. But at the same time, I think it's going to hit a lot of resistance in the 123s to the 124s. Nice trade. And then all I would do is I, if you're in and you're already in, say, from the 116 area, uh, which I believe is the question, um, yeah, I, all I would do is raise the stop. This is one of those where I'm not sure I would add like a triangle to the upside by increasing my position as it goes up. I'd be decreasing it. And then the next time down is where I'd start to look to see, is this where I'm, it's a low that I want to start increasing on the upside? So... Um, Four points, three, three, three to four percent correction uh, from here. If it, that has to hold, but if it moves up about another uh, two or three points, how it holds into next Wednesday or Thursday is going to be very important. Okay, so let me just get back to uh, something that was asked about. Uh, where, where did it go? CLNY, CLNY uh, has an eight percent dividend. What's the name of it? What's the name of it? It is called. Um, Colony North Star trading at 5.508, 5.58. So the question I had, is that the one? What, what was I looking at just now, which I asked about the, uh, about the dividend? Huh. Didn't I just ask you about a dividend on a stock? Was it this one? What, what, what was the one that had those letters that were in a different place? Let me go through this. Um, gold. All right, I can't tell right now. So it's trading at 5.58. This is one of those exa wonderful examples of those stocks that I talk about and I show in my subscribers' corner. Um, right here at the Trader's Corner for my subscribers to my opening call. This is one of those that has this incredible move to the upside. And you keep thinking, I'm waiting for it to pull back. The MACD is good. Stochastic is good. It gave a Chapman Wave squash between the Stochastic and the MACD. And it doesn't give you an entry point. And it goes all the way from $4.30, or was it 28 cents? $4 and 32 cents all the way to your first peak. In other words, these are floating letters, floating letter A, floating letter A, 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 until it makes a peak A right here and the high of the 20th of September at 5.79 is the first time it makes an A. And then you say, ah, oh, it's got to pull back. No, it pulls back for a day and then bam, goes to leg B, one day pull back. Leg C, and that C is a doji candle. Everything about it says that should be a peak D. And then it pulls back as if it's a peak D. And now you say, is it going to go to his D? No, this is a C, and you've got to treat it as a separate thing because it has the entire look of a D. Mm -hmm. Look, it's got the candle. It broke. It broke nine periods. Then it broke 14 periods. Support then the 14, uh, the nine cross negative to the 14 period. MACD's bad. Stochastic's way down 13%. Hold off on this. I would say, yes, keep your eye on it. I think it's one of those that you like for the questioner. But at the same time, I'm going to say... Um, I'm, I'm just going to say that it it has done really well. Just find out if there's a reason for that. If the reason is there's just nothing wrong, everything's good, then you want to nibble. If you're in it, that's great. But if you haven't been in, you could nibble around about 547. But I wouldn't really add to it until it shows me that it wants to start in a U-shape formation, cup formation, and try to get to the five point. 71 area. It's at 558 right now, because right now it could go sideways for quite a while. Hope I answered that question. So the reason why I knew that there could be a, a dividend, because I had my notation, and the whole price had moved. And that doesn't happen unless the price has uh, been changed. Um, so now what I want you to look at is TLT. 
I, Jane, Jane had asked me on the 11th, I think it was, and I didn't. I did see it, but I just I forgot who asked and I forgot what the question was. I mean, I remember there was a question and I forgot who it was. We did cover the TLT. I'll do it again. The TLT is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Peak C in the monthly chart. This monthly chart was an exceptional move to the upside. It's done it before. But um, this was just another one of those goes 111 to 148. I, this is a bond. This is not RGLD. This is something else, not a stock. So um, it has done that. It did that back in 2000, uh, back in December of 2013. Uh, it went from 101 to 138 and then pulled back halfway and then went to 143 and pulled back to 111. Vicious moves, unbelievable moves, and these are bonds. So I, I'm going to stay with this, not as an alternative count. It could be an F, but I'm calling it a C because I think there's going to be one more burst of lower rates, and that's going to be the big test all round. So um, that, I mean, in my big picture, I think that rates have another... Uh, um, a little destiny with um, yields that are pretty much in the very low range. Low range. I don't know if we're going to zero percent, but I think we're going to go there. I think internationally we're going to be forced to do that. But at the same time, I think in the shorter term, I think we're stuck between we're at 140.22. I think we're stuck between 143.70, and it better better hold 130. Uh, so with one, it better hold 137.30, otherwise it could go all the way back down to 136. That's where you will see uh, yields actually rally sharply. I don't think there's much in the way of rallying sharply. Let me show you here T and X. Just at the moment, I think it's just kind of stuck. And I wouldn't be surprised if it gets stuck. It's at 1.736 in the 10-year. If you, you see it trade 18.32-ish, around about the 18 point. 18.12, 18.32, and then go above that, that's a little different. The TLT will start to pull back deeper, and you'll get the bonds going even higher to retest the 1903 high of the 13th of um, September, 1.903. My thinking is it's just stuck between about 18.25-ish and probably 17.36 right now, 16.78-ish at this particular point. And that's really what we have to monitor because you're not getting the MACD and stochastic in the weekly chart had really improved a lot. The price hasn't even gone above the, the 14 period moving average of 17.70. The monthly chart is suggesting, yep, got to watch this closely. You could have a nice move up for a weekly trough and then come back down for your leg D. But in the meantime, I'm just saying, stuck in, a, in the middle of a range. I'll be right back. Any calls? No calls. Oh. Um, all right, Basil Trap and Tiger Conditions out. I'll talk about why I'm expecting slightly new highs, and then we've got to watch out. Uh, up five in the Dow, up seven in the S&P. Divergence because of IBM lagging so badly. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. I had a question here. Um, hi, Basil. Can you please refresh your view on ARWR? It seems to be one of those picks where within uh, what you're uh, viewing as a cautious market that's in a sweet spot, RNAi uh, ther therapies. Um, as you may remember, I'm long since December 2016. I do, and it's fantastic stock and have been adding. Currently, I'm holding additional deep in the money January 2020 calls and short puts. So clearly, I have a lot of belief in areas prospects. Do you also see a daily peak? Be about to take out the old 36.80 high with 40 to 42 short term and 78 to 80 longer term objective. Would love your thoughts. Thanks, um, Dan. So, Dan, 36.80 was the high on the 20th of August of ARWR, Arrowhead Farmer. And I love this in my newsletter. In fact, I've just I changed a whole bunch of things uh, because I put in the stocks on the watch, I the stocks on the watch list. I just like to keep it there so I don't forget them. Um, it'd be, uh, I, I, I didn't add many. I took out a bunch. And ARWR was highlighted. There are two others that are highlighted. I was looking at ARWR, and I thought, this is one because we had Agilent, which is in the, the, in, in the, the medical area, but it's a different instrumentation type thing, um, which was fabulous. We, got, we had nice profits in that. But what happened was, it pulled back sharply. And then I thought, OK, let's switch. As we've done before, we've switched from others um, for shorter term trades from in the same sector. But it hasn't pulled back. It went from 25.97. So on the 20th of August, it's at 36.80. It drops almost 10 points um, a month later, 9.30. And it rallies all the way to today on the 16th of October, it's at 36.58 high, just um, what, 30 something cents off the, the, the recovery high, which is the all time high. And it looks, it looks really good. And it had that peak E pullback in the weekly chart. What do you do when a stock does that? And then it makes a new, a new recovery high in a V-shaped formation. Wow, all I can say is that I looked at this closely and I think that I'm going to have to call this a, a C. Let us see in the monthly chart if it goes to uh, 36.81, if it, even by one penny. I love what you did. I love, I, I, I've kept it. I couldn't remember who it was that had it down. It was you. And I love what you've done. You've planned your trade. You've traded your plan. Just wonderful activity. Now, what do you do when it's about to double top? Well, have a look at this in the Chapman Week methodology. We can go from the left side, 36.80, to the low that was made right there. We can go click, put in the right side, 
price time match called the Chapman. Well, we actually, what we do is let me just kill this right here. What we do is we talk about left side, right side, LS dash RS, left side, right side, price slash time match. And uh, we'll call it a Chapman wave time match because this is a technique that I developed over the years. And if it gets to 36.81, it's gone to a higher high in way shorter time frame. I usually consider that bullish, especially since I've got a Chapman wave squash, squash between the stochastic and the MACD, which suggests that this should go very quickly in letters to an A, then a B, and then a C. And then it might take a little while as the stochastic says, phew, at 97%, I need a little bit of a breather. And then the, that's the talk. The, the, the stochastic is the talk, the, that, that initial thrust. And then the momentum has to be taken over by the MACD, M for mag momentum. Um, so I, I love this. I, I love your, I love the whole plan and everything. All I can say is that when you're getting to the previous high, that's when you have to lift off your, your finger, foot off the brake just for a moment, just a yellow light. You don't have to hit the brake. You just lift it off the accelerator and say, okay, you tell me what you want. What I'd be nervous is if there is a doji candle tomorrow, slightly higher high, but a doji candle, and then a sharp move down on Monday and, fr Monday and Tuesday. Then I say, oh, okay, then I have to call this a gray leg B uh, if it hasn't taken out the high. If it has taken out the high, it becomes a blue F to say, hey, we could have recycled. It's fine. Nothing wrong. But it could even be an even more important leg B. And I won't have the security until we don't do that. The MAGD is about, just right now, is about to cross positive. We have to wait until tomorrow to see if the weekly has gone back to being positive. If it crosses positive and the stochastic is only at 44%, so this is, the price has gotten away from the technicals and the weekly, but the monthly is saying, hey, 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 the, the weekly is always late to the party. Look at me, look at me. I'm a beautiful green candle. I love this. And now your question as to where it could go to, that's always very difficult when you're looking at all-time highs. This has a way of screaming to the upside, but there's always an inverted doge, a Chapman Wave Roman candle that says, watch out. And we, we saw that back in the high of June, uh, monthly chart, June the, uh, of 2010, hit 18.50 and then plummeted down to a low of um, 2.02. .02, and then it screams and does that exact reverse, Chapman Wave inverse, a candle right there um, at 2763, March of 2014. That's four years. And a little bit over four years later, it's screaming up. If we see that, that same reversal, I'll say, be careful. This is going down to the 20s. But I agree with you. I think it has the potential. Let's go one step at a time to the 40, to, to the 39 to 41 area. Just that one step. No use talking about 80 when you have to get to 39 and 41. So that, I love it. Good, good analysis. And uh, I love what you're doing. So yes, I had it and I didn't do anything. It was on my list. I was waiting for a little bit of a pullback. I, actually, I put it on the list. Uh, I mean, I highlighted it about a week ago. So it's been there and it just hasn't given me that, that little pullback to say, is this the time that you think you should get in? <laughs> 32 is up four points. It's up 11% since then. So it's getting a bit away, but I, this is really good. And good analysis. Okay, a couple of things I was asked about. Uh, let's see, what does it say here? Buy XLI, that's the Dow Industrials. Um, buy, and what does it say? Buy, I have to get this. While talk of industrial recession, you know, I just at this particular moment, the XLI is still a better instrument, even though it's only in leg C in a retracement. And this is the other thing that made me a little nervous. You see that it's not in D and like the others. This is only in C. You say, oh, it's only in C. It should go to a D. But this C is way, it's 77, 75. It's way underneath the 88. Sorry, 78. Right, and the 78 last high that was made. What was that? 79.79. It's underneath that. So I just have to be a little careful. And you remember that big uh, oval pattern that I talk about in the uh, weekly chart of the XLI, which I believe is a, much more an industrial than the Dow. Dow 30 is what? Nike? Nike? Um, Intel? Procter & Gamble, Travelers, United Health, 
Verizon, Visa? What's in there? Just Caterpillar, Boeing? Um, I had a couple of others here. Not many. UTX, United Technologies, and Triple M. Um, yeah, there are not many. <laughs> Dow Industrials. So, okay, Dow's up six, and then I, when we wrap up, I'll tell you why. I think we'll just squeak to a new high, and then I, I, I don't know. And that's when my foot lifts off the brake. I'm really hovering over the brake, lifting off the accelerator. I'll be back. Dow's up seven. Dow's up Chapman Tiger. The mission's out. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So let's just do this. I had a question about left side, right side price time match in the TLT. I, I'll do that uh, on Technical Friday. I'll do that. Um, there's, there's a chance. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a, a, able, I'm able to do that, but I might have to do an early show tomorrow to be recorded. We'll see. Um, just uh, had a change of plans, so we'll see what happens here. Okay, look, the Dow, I could call this a peak C1, peak C2, little double top action. I don't need to do that right now. We're still early in the game. We're still holding above, very nicely above the nine period moving average. We're in that V shaped pattern. We've still got until the 23rd, I believe it is, the 24th to get to 27,306. Um, uh, and if that if that works out, 
then you can chop around and just have kind of choppy, choppy, slightly higher highs coming up. I can just tell you this, that in the patterns that we're looking at, the cup formation, cup formation, cup formation in the weekly, and that resistance level that we're looking at here, the MACD in the weekly chart is still negative. If that MACD crosses positively, usually you've got a little bit more strength to go before it turns back down again. So all I can say is, well, um, I don't see anything yet that says, oh, oh, watch out on the downside. What I am saying is I'm a little cautious because you've got your leg Ds underneath the previous highs and the down the S&P. Uh, the QQQ is a little different because the QQQ 194.71 was the last D, but it's really 195.55 that goes back uh, four months. So there's a little difference there, but it is holding quite nicely. Yeah, the technicals are quite good. And then you get a Netflix like today, uh, screams overnight, way, way higher, and then drops sharply intraday, gaps up, and now it's up 12. Uh, this is saying to me that the whole FANG area, there's a lot of volatility that I'm still looking at. There's a lot of volatility, but starting to make some kind of a basing in the Dow, my Dow Quartet, and that to me is really important. Another question I had was in the IYT, the transports, yeah, this is nice, but it's not great. Look, transports are lagging badly, but they are at least rallying. So I don't want to make decisions right now. I'm just saying we've got a list of stocks that we would like to get on any sudden thousand points or more drop. But at the same time, there are stocks that we're adding to. We're getting in here. I like the commodities. I didn't get a chance to do that. I'll do this. Look at this. Screaming to the upside. Wheat. Screaming to the upside. Soybeans. Um, Larry Pesavento.